Hello, this is Dr. Nimichuk. I want to put out a just a short little video on something that seems to be growing in frequency. Uh, we call it stuttering, stammering. Um, you know, this has been around for a long time, obviously, but as of late, I'm seeing more and more cases uh, with this. And I want to share with everybody how uh, you know, my observations are leading me to conclude that SIBO or small intestine bacterial overgrowth have an awful lot to do with this. Now SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So small intestine overgrowth. Now normally our small intestine has these families of bacteria predominantly growing up here and these families of bacteria predominantly growing down here, okay? And for every one bacteria up here, you have 100 million down here. So this picture doesn't really exemplify uh, the concentration differences. But this is pretty much normal. Now, what happens with SIBO is you have these normal bacteria living in the wrong place by a magnitude of 10,000 to 100,000 times the bacteria. These are not bad bacteria, they're normal healthy bacteria, just in the wrong place, okay? This has been growing in frequency over the last several decades. Uh, those of you who are familiar with my autism work, there's growing evidence that this is the driving force behind autism. Now, how does this relate to stammering or stuttering? So first, what causes SIBO, all right? Well, very commonly, it's a wide variety of things. Uh, historically, antibiotics are one that commonly do it. Abdominal surgery, especially if they're touching or uh, cutting your intestines or taking out your gallbladder. Uh, so post gallbladder or a bowel resection, 40, 50% of people will develop SIBO just after those procedures. On occasion, vaccines can do it. I believe this is the linkage between vaccines and autism. And what is growing in great uh, <clears throat> numbers is it's looking like COVID is triggering SIBO. Now we have evidence that COVID, well, COVID inf infects your cells through what's called an ACE2 receptor. It's looking like the highest concentration of ACE2 receptors are in the small intestine. And with that, uh, with a COVID infection, one of the things that can happen is the small bowel slows down and it will trigger SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Now, SIBO can cause a whole bunch of symptoms. It, the bacteria in the small intestine can actually communicate with the autonomic nervous system. This can be responsible for fatigue, you know, cognitive problems known as brain fog or attention deficit disorder. Headaches, this includes migraine headaches, neck tightness, formerly known as coat hanger pain, uh, heartburn reflux, constipation, a sense of being dizzy or lightheaded. If you look at these, these are an awful lot of things that long haulers with COVID have, okay? And <clears throat> as well as other individuals. SIBO can cause, other than the neurological symptoms, can cause some direct kind of symptoms. And the irritation of SIBO can lead to diarrhea, it's very common uh, source of food intolerance. So this is when people say, oh, I can't eat those tomatoes or that spice or acidy foods give me heartburn or things like that. The vast majority of all those people have SIBO, all right? And then the from the leaky gut phenomena known as bacterial translocation, you can get the secondary joint and muscle pain often diffused. It doesn't fit any real particular like autoimmune pattern. Uh, it's technically what we call autoinflammatory pattern. But anyhow, so SIBO can cause a wide variety of things. And what I have found is when I treat SIBO, patients who have a history of stuttering or stammering, it'll stop. This includes individuals who may have been stuttering on and off for literally decades. I've had people uh, after treatment of SIBO, it'll dramatically improve and most often completely stops. We have a growing number of kids and adults who uh, have been uh, affected by COVID uh, more recently. 
Many of them are left with this stuttering or stammering kind of phenomena. Some have been prior patients of mine who were doing otherwise well, get COVID, have a recurrence of their SIBO, and now they're stuttering. Now, fortunately, when you treat the SIBO, in pretty much every case I can think of, and I have to tell you, in the last two or three years, I probably had 40 or 50 cases where part of their part of the patient's symptoms was stuttering or stammering. And when you treat them, you have this dramatic improvement, if not usually complete recovery. Now, <clears throat> the treatment of SIBO, you kind of have to think of this separate. Uh, you know, I think of them separately between children and adults. Now, in children, you can use a prebiotic fiber. I prefer inulin. This will control SIBO and doesn't, though, reverse it, as in you can stop the inulin and it will not come back. Because SIBO isn't really like an infection. It seems that SIBO is more a problem that the small intestine motility is off. And as long as that problem exists, the SIBO can keep coming back at some level. <clears throat> and so with the kids, a little prebiotic fiber can control them an eighth to a half a teaspoon, one or two times a day. This is a higher dose than I tend to use on my autistic children. And it just seems that the autistic children are a little sensitive, uh, more sensitive to the inulin fiber. And that would need to be on a continuous basis. Children uh, can be treated also with rifaximin. It's a non-absorbable antibiotic, which makes it very, very safe. Um, you might be lucky and just a, a single course of this will uh, can, can clear the overgrowth out of the small intestine and it might not come back. Um, often it needs to be intermittent uh, in both kids and adults. And on some cases, especially after a fairly significant bout of COVID, um, it seems there's substantial small bowel motility problems and the rifaximin will work, take it for 10 to 14 days. And if you stop, it comes right back. And so the children are requiring continuous rifaximin to, to control uh, the stuttering and their other symptoms from SIBO. Fortunately, because rifaximin does not get in the bloodstream, it uh, seems to be much safer than Tylenol because it can't reach, you know, a drug cannot, say, cause liver problems if it can't reach the liver, okay? Now, in adults, for reasons, <clears throat> even the inulin on a continuous basis doesn't often, I, I think a very limited chance it's gonna control SIBO in a meaningful way. And uh, so we have to there to, to use the rifaximin as well. And again, intermittent or continuous. Now, rifaximin has been used um, for about 30 years to treat this condition. Uh, this is known <clears throat> as hepatic encephalopathy. That means if you have very advanced liver disease and you get bacterial overgrowth, it can make you really sick and even kill you. So there's a lot of experience using rifaximin for this. And as I've been alluding to, either the intermittent or continuous rifaximin is determined by the motility of the small intestine. And you can't really, I mean, you can test for it, but it doesn't help you figure out which, you know, how you're gonna use the drug. You just have to try <clears throat> a course of rifaximin and see if you relapse or not. And then if you are relapsing fairly quickly, you need a more aggressive treatment uh, to reduce inflammation in hopes of getting the nervous system of the um, small intestine to recover so you don't need continual rifaximin or, or very frequent rifaximin. That's what, you know, my Nemechek protocol that we've developed over the last 20 years, very, very effective at control, at getting the nervous system to recover from injuries. And uh, so you would look at that in a little more detail, and there's other videos that talk about that. So anyhow, quick review. It's looking like SIBO is driving the stuttering and stammering we're seeing more and more of, and uh, that SIBO is coming from COVID. 
It's, a, I think, accounting for the big bump that I'm seeing in the patients here, but also historically antibiotics, abdominal surgery, vaccinations um, will all trigger this. And, uh, and that SIBO itself has its own kind of symptoms, as we mentioned before. Thank you very much, and uh, take care.